It's time to get inside the Giants huddle. Let's go back to your huddle. On Giants.com. Tempo, tempo, tempo. And the Giants mobile app. Go, 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 part go. Part of the Giants podcast network. Yeah. Paul Dottino back on Giants.com on the Giants huddle. We are joined by NFL Network's Brian Boldinger. As always, you can catch the Giants huddle on Giants.com and all your favorite podcast platforms everywhere. Brian, it's great to see you. And it seems as though every time the last few years that you've been out here to camp, we ask you about the offensive line first. Yes. That's pretty natural given mm-hmm. you played the position. But as you look at these guys now, it does appear talent-wise they've got the most talent in the room than they've had in a long time. Oh, I agree. I agree. It's a question of putting it together. But, you know, I, I talked to Evan Neal today. You know, I, I talked to Shane Lemieux. Uh, you watch Andrew Thomas out there right now. I've always been a big fan of Mark Lewinsky, going back to his West Virginia days. I mean, Quentin Nelson got all the attention in Indianapolis, and rightfully so. But Glow was a solid player on a very good offensive line. He knows what it looks like. Um, you know, John Feliciano has played for Bobby Johnson. He's been up in Buffalo with those guys. So I think they've got a five that you can count on right now. And that's a question of, you know, just timing, um, you know, coaching points, learning the offense, like learning the subtleties, the communication, all the things that are necessary. But I feel like it's the best five that they've had here in years. Now, at the same time, you mentioned Glowinski and Feliciano. These are two grizzled veterans mm-hmm. about the same age. They told me they've known each other for a long time. How much will that help accelerate the gelling process? Because when you overturn an offensive line, obviously it takes time to mesh. It does. And sometimes there's no, there's no amount of time. Like, you know it when you know it. But I think when you have veteran guys, like I remember way back, you know, Paul, when Loams Brown came, like they put mm-hmm. together right in one year. But that was a veteran guy coming in at left tackle. They played a lot of football in Detroit, came here, and, like, it meshed right away. Bubba Parker, like all the guys that were there back then. And so I, I feel like if you've been around and you've played with different people, like Glow and Feliciano has, like, I think it's a little bit easier because at some point you're talking the same language. It may be a, you know, you, you might have called it something different in Indianapolis or in Buffalo, but here – like, you can figure out what it is. And there's always game day situations. Like, how do we get to the Mike linebacker? You know, where well, you got to fix it game day. How do we handle this pressure that we're getting? Like, this isn't what we walked through or talked about all week. we got to fix it now. And so that's, that, like, that's next-level stuff. But that's what you can do with experienced guys. How difficult is it going to be for Shane Lemieux, who only played a half last year, before he wound up injuring his patella tendon. And now here he is coming back. And at the moment, he's got a leg up on being the starting left guard. Well, I just got done talking to him, Paul. I'm, I'm, I, you know, it's interesting because, like, Shane never missed a start. Tougher than nails. Tougher than nails. But he never missed a start high school or college. Like, he started every game at Oregon. And he started, you know, when he started uh, his rookie year here in the Giants, I thought he, he helped turn this for a brief period of time. I thought the line started to really come on with him and Andrew on the left side. But, you know, I, he, he's a tough guy that wants to learn. Like, even now, he's just talking protections and some of the things. Um, you know, he wants, to, he wants to be good, you know. And he's a good pulling guard. Like, he's got some versatility to him. So, you know, it's a question of understanding who you're going up against. You know, are you you're going up against Aaron Donald? Are you going up against Dexter Lawrence? Are you going up against, you know, Fletcher Cox, whoever? Uh, you just tell me, you know, like Jonathan Allen, Washington, you know, he's giving him some problems. You gotta, you got to know the lineup. You got to get to know the lineup and he's got to get back into that groove of preparing week in, week out, providing, you know, he wins the job. Uh, but I think, you know, right now it's a question of honing your techniques. That's what training camp is about, but then really working because you're only going to be as good as your weakest link. So now it's a question of really playing with Andrew and playing with John and, you know, playing with uh, glow and like really thinking like one group. See, now, that brings me to a question that we debate on our BBKL program all the time. Mm -hmm. How many snaps should that offensive line play together during the course of the three-week preseason? I'm one who thinks they need a little more than most people. There are others who get gun-shy with all that injury stuff and say, well, oh, my God, they're thin. They get somebody hurt. It's a problem. Well, I would say, look, I would play in all three games because you still got over two weeks after the last preseason game to get ready for the season. So I would play them in all three games. I know for maybe the second one, I would really treat it like you're getting ready, and I would put them out there for the first half and into the third quarter. Mm-hmm. I'd play them all. And I think you're going to get the best evaluation of Daniel Jones and what works, what doesn't work. Um, it just looks just 
watching a little bit of practice here, Paul, um, that they're going to be a big spread offense. Uh, and so pass protection is going to be paramount. And so as many different looks as you can get in preseason, um, regardless of who they're playing against, I think they got to play. So I'm with you. I think I would err on the side of more snaps versus less. All right, let me ask you about the other guy we haven't really said much about, Evan Neal, the rookie at right tackle. Between these two mammoth condominiums at left tackle and right tackle, this is the most imposing duo on the outside that the Giants have had in forever, it seems. What will his learning curve be? What will you look for if you're the coaching staff at the early part of the preseason and the regular season that tells you he's going to be okay? Well, I think one of the reasons why he was the seventh pick in the draft was, you know, he walked into Tuscaloosa basically the same size he is now. I mean, he was a horse when he came to school there. And if you start 41 games for Nick Saban in a row and you play three different positions, it tells me two things. It tells me, one, you're durable and you know how to take care of yourself. It doesn't always transfer to the NFL, but there's a pretty good um, body of work there. And then it tells me that you're a pretty intelligent football player, that you've learned left tackle, left guard, right tackle. And he, I even talked to him today, Paul, and he's, he said, look, I can play any position outside of center. Like, don't put me in center, but I can play anywhere. So I think he, he feels like he can learn the position. Now, he's got to, you know, and it will help seeing Kayvon out there and seeing Audulari out there. He's seeing some decent pass rushers during training camp right now. Um, you know, he's got, to get, he's got to get used to the speed of the game. I say now, if you're the right tackle, you know, for a team, I don't care if you're NFC East, where you're at, you're seeing as many good pass rushers at right tackle as the days when, you know, it was LT and all the guys over at left tackle. Mm-hmm. I mean, right now, Cleo Max over the right tackle, uh, TJ Watts over the right tackle. I mean, you just go through the list of Daniel Hunter. Like, there's elite pass rushers at over the right tackle. And so, you know, Chandler Jones, Max Crosby, I mean, all these guys are out there. Like, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta see and you gotta really study the tendencies of these guys. Don't miss your chance to experience a premier hospitality experience watching Giants games and world-class concerts in 2022 as a Giants suite partner. Limited full-season locations are available or place a deposit for individual games. Call 888-NYG-1925 or visit Giants.com slash suites for more information. Now, if we believe what we're seeing now, and there's going to be a lot of spread and a lot of motion and a lot of skill position guys on the field, that means those five got to do it pretty much on their own. Mm -hmm. They're not going to have a lot of help with extra tight ends or chips from their backs Mm -hmm. and this and that because there's going to be a lot of empty backfield. The pressure on this old line it, can that be overwhelming because they have so much on their shoulders? They need to hold up. Well, I mean, there's ways you can handle some of that. You you, you can chip. You keep it back in the backfield. I mean, Saquon's got to become a better pass protector than what he has shown mm-hmm. if he wants to be on the field every down. Um, but you, 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 there's some things that you can do to help the edges a little bit in this business. But by and large, yes, you got to hold up. you got to hold up out there. And, um, you know, the quarterback has got to be adept because if they send an extra guy, um, you know, the way Wink will, uh, or overload one side and bring an extra guy that then you can block. You got to have, uh, you got to have a game plan, whether it's hot, side adjust. I mean, the quarterback's got to be ready. He's got to see it the way the offensive line sees it. But it, it is a big, big factor, um, being able to, to hold up. And look, let's face it, in Buffalo, Josh Allen was their extra protection because of his mobility and his size and his ability to extend plays. And I just, I don't want to compare Daniel Jones to Josh Allen in that regard. But we do know he's a good athlete. He can escape. But it's escaping with a plan. Mm -hmm. Escaping whether it's to tuck it and run, which he's done effectively in Josh Allen talking about, and Daniel has at times, or, you know, escaping to throw. And so you've got to have a plan when you escape the pocket. Let's talk about Daniel Jones for a minute. We're seeing a lot more uh, mo- motion and mobility with him, too. Rolling pocket, moving out, all of that kind of stuff. He tells us that what he's trying to get done now is be clean in and out of the huddle mm-hmm. and make sure he makes the right quick decision at the line. Those are his priorities mm-hmm. into this camp. What have you seen? I saw that today. I saw that today. I mean, they were, you know, they ran a lot with third down uh, offense today and, you know, red zone offense and, um, there was a quick, there was a, a tempo to it. Mm-hmm. You know, now, you know, Mike's calling a play, Brian's in the huddle. Like they're going back and forth, however the play's coming in. And I saw guys getting lined up quickly, getting lined up to play, and the snap was off. And you gotta, you, you know, you gotta train your, 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 your system to be able to play fast. Think fast, play fast. 
And I think that that will benefit everybody. But it's got to start with the quarterback because if somebody's not lined up right, you got to get make sure you get them lined up right quickly. Mm-hmm. This uh, wide receiver room, a little bit topsy-turvy as well, all the injuries they've had. They've had some new names come in and so forth and so on. How long will it take, given the fact that this is a complex scheme, for the quarterback and the receiver to get on the same page because we know they want to be a passing offense, but if it doesn't click right away, it's going to look ugly. It can, but, you know, the big thing, and, you know, this never happened last year. It didn't happen in this all season. Like, they haven't been practicing. They've got to practice. You know, Kenny Galladay told me today, he goes, my number one goal this year is to be on the field to practice. I don't want to miss a practice. Like, they've got to be out here every day. I told this to Brian today. It's like at least encouraging. It's only the second day, but your starting offense is on the field getting all these reps. So, like, all you can do is try to get out there every day. I get a little bit better every day. It's cliche, Paul, right? But, you know, you couldn't say that in the past. Like, these guys missed way too much practice. Well, so you would want the receivers to get as many snaps as a starting O-line in the preseason games as well? Yes. I want, I want, uh, I want my offense working together. Mm-hmm. I want those guys out there on the field. I want the timing uh, to be as crisp as you can. They've got to make up for a lot of ground. Um, and so, yes, I want those guys with the number one quarterback to be out there getting as much as they possibly can. When the second offense line comes in, whatever you want to do to shuffle, whether it's, you know, bringing the Tarot in or, you know, uh, Davis in or whatever, like you could do that. But I want, I want my quarterback playing with my number one offense line with my receivers. I want to get as much timing done now as I can. There's a very strong feeling that despite a lot of the passing that they're going to do, the offense will still run through Saquon Barkley. He seems to be as healthy and as physically fit as he's ever been before. What are your expectations for him coming into this final year of his deal? Well, you know, we've seen him put up 2,000 yards. You know, we've seen him play like that in this league. So can he get back to that? to that way. I mean, they, they ran spot screens to him and he go 50 yards, you know, across the field. Like he was a human highlight reel that year. Like I, I know he's itching, but the, the highlights are the highlights. Like I want to see Saquon be a better between the tackles runner. I want right. him sh- to demonstrate contact balance, to bounce off tacklers. Like I don't, I want to see him use his size and his strength and his power to his advantage. Like he has the ability to wear teams down, but he, he, you know, he hasn't always been able to do that, whether it's the injuries, the knee, the ankles, all that stuff that has plagued him the last few years. I, I want to see a more physical runner between the tackles. Yes, you can make a jump cut and get out into the space. That's beautiful. But there's going to be downs where you just got to get four yards. All right, let's ask about the defensive side of the ball. You mentioned Week Martindale briefly earlier during this conversation. And, you know, there's a lot of excitement from these defensive players about the aggressiveness, which means high risk, high reward. We know that, Brian. Mm -hmm. Uh, How much of Wink's defense are we going to see early on? Because you have to figure there will be a learning curve. And if there's high risk, high reward, there could be some pretty nasty moments at the beginning. Yeah, but like Wink's philosophy is never going to change. you got to hit the quarterback. You have to affect the quarterback. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Yeah, there, there are all those pressure packages, but you, there's overloads. There's disguises. I expect them to move Kayvon around and get him isolated against maybe the, the second tackle to get one-on-ones, and there's ways you could do that, bringing linebackers, taking the guards out of the equation, getting the running back out. I mean, I expect him to get one-on-ones for Kayvon. I expect him to be a force right away. I expect all the different looks, the free hitters. You're going to see – Safeties, whether it's Xavier or whoever, Julian, you're going to see safeties on blitzes, okay, and out of disguise looks, where the speed to the quarterback is as important as having a guy like, you know, Audulari or, you know, uh, Kayvon that can beat and win one on ones. Mm-hmm. Like his ability to scheme free hitters to the quarterback is as good as there is in this league. And sometimes just the speed that you just affect the quarterback right away, make him pull the ball down, move. Get off the, get off his spot. All those affect the timing of a throw. Those are the things that, regardless of um, how good the corner play is, you're still going to see them. Giant season tickets are on sale now for the 2022 season. In addition to ticket savings, membership benefits include access to exclusive events, experiences, pre-sales, and more. You can lock in your seats starting at just 100 bucks. Call 888-NYG-1925 or visit Giants.com slash tickets for more information. The interesting thing about Wink is when you look at his defenses in Baltimore – 
he didn't often have that one double-digit sack guy or that 15 sack guy. He just had a ton of sacks coming from a bunch of different places, which goes back to the schematics. Yes. And and would you expect to see that here, although knowing that Thibodeau, Ocelari, and Williams all have the ability to get to the passer? They do. Uh, but, you know, even like um, guys that he had, you know, like uh, – Zadarius Smith and Matt Judon, they all had much better sack numbers as soon as they left Baltimore. Yes. You know, to your point. And so it's not about, you know, like the Eagles won a Super Bowl here four years ago. They didn't have a player that had 10 sacks. So, you know, high sack totals, fans like that, you know, we want to compare the whole world to LT in this business now. Um, <laughs> like, we, we're not going to do that. But No, because there isn't one. <laughs> no, there isn't one. So, you know, but, but, you know, sometimes it's just about affecting the quarterback the best way possible and look if if those three guys that you just mentioned Algilari and and Big Cat and Kayvon if they can get there you know if they if they can win their one-on-ones then you'll see more of that let's ask you about the secondary before we go because there's been overturning there as well mm-hmm. James Bradbury's now in Philadelphia yeah. because of a salary cap problem with Dory Jackson has to step up and be the number one corner and then well you got some inexperience back there don't know about the other corner. You got you got a uh, love at safety. You got McKinney at safety. They're young. Mm-hmm. How much pressure is on them so that the front seven can do what they need to do? But those guys still got to hold up. Well, they got to find some guys. You know, I mean, whether it's you know Darnay has played in the slot, um, Rodarius. Like, I mean, I, I'm just throwing names out there. They got to find some guys. Like, I, I don't know right now. Um, Adore has been a good player in this league. He's also been injured in this league. Uh, you know, he's getting a great opportunity here uh, to really get a second act going. You know, in his young career, but you know they're going to have to they're going to have to grow up fast. You know, they don't have Marlon Humphrey here. You know, that can just go up against your number one receiver. I think going up against Kenny, going up against Cardarius, going up against you know Darius, like seeing those guys every day in practice, just watching a couple drills today, it can help. It can help these young corners and this young secondary. They they need good practice um, from their starting receivers in this business right now. That was my last question because so many times we'll hear players and coaches say, "Iron sharpens iron," mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Well, is do you think that's a lot of hullabaloo, or is there something to that when you see this offense going up against Wings' defense, and of course this defense going up against so many skill positions that the Giants have on offense? Well, I mean, look, I go back to Dallas when you know. Michael Irvin was going up against, you know, number one corners and Dion and, you know, what even the Jets in 2015 when Brandon Marshall and, and, uh, you, you know, Revis was, were there. Like they, they were, they, every time they lined up, they went against each other. I remember seeing a, uh, uh, a scrimmage between Detroit and Pittsburgh one year and everywhere Antonio Brown went, Darius Slay went. <laughs> like, you know, the good ones want to shut down the best. Right. So that's something to look for in this training camp. Like, okay, whether it's Darnay or, you know, Dory, like, okay, go up there against, you know, Kenny and go shut him down and not let him score in the end zone. And stop the foot quickness and the suddenness that Cardarius shows. You know, like, they have different types of receivers. Like, really get as many good reps against those guys as you can. He is Brian Baldinger of the NFL Network. Brian, always appreciate your time. Thanks, Paul. You bet, man. As always, you can catch the Giants Huddle on Giants.com, the Giants mobile app, and your favorite podcast platforms everywhere. Until next time, I'm Paul Dottino. So long, everybody.